If you intend driving the Kubi Pass, it's important to watch part one first as it contains the Google Earth orientation clips as well as important information including directions. Once you reach the summit and the fork, you should take the right hand route which descends down towards the Kubi River Valley. It's important to note that the next 12 kilometers ends in a dead end and you will need to return along the same route. The road immediately begins a very long but gentle descent towards the river valley. The initial part of the descent is quite comfortable and lasts for two and a half kilometers where the first farm is reached. At this point the road forks at the crossing of a small tributary. Keep left here as the right hand road leads to the farm Kurenglandshoek approximately three and a half kilometers away. The left hand road ends four kilometers later at a T-junction close to the western bank of the Kubi River. The Kubi River Valley is an isolated and remote part of South Africa with just a few farms eking out an existence along the rocky and sandy slopes of the valley. The right hand route follows the river bank and links to the farms Bergvlei, Witkleigat, Blokop and Sandfontein. The track continues heading southwards for a total of 13 kilometers from the T-junction to terminate at the last farm in the southern part of the Kubi Valley called Ondertein. It lies under the shadow of the perfectly named Kir Omberg which means turnaround mountain. Back at the T-junction, the left-hand option takes one first to the actual farm called Kubi, with a tall peak to the west known as Alamans Punt with an altitude of 841 meters, whereafter the road passes through the farms Boskral, Dachafontein and ends at the farm called Rietvlei approximately 9 kilometers further to the north. If you drive this pass, don't be in a hurry. Savor and appreciate the isolated and rugged nature of the pass and consider yourself fortunate to have been privileged to have traversed it.